Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie It is John Duggan with you this week I'm joined by the former champion apprentice the flat jockey from Tipperary attached to the Dunnock O'Brien stable Gavin Ryan Gavin how's the form? I'm all good thanks yourself Up tip Gavin hope you're well Um how has the season been going for you so far? So I know when we were on a couple of years ago, you have been just crowned champion apprentice and now you're riding for Dunica, you're a professional. How have you uh, been finding the season in terms of learning more about race riding, in terms of learning about horses? How's it going for you? Yeah, it's been going well. Um, we've, we've nine winners so far, so um, we're start, starting to get into the swing of things now and with the yard as well is starting to hit a bit of form and we've nicer types of horses starting to come out. So... Um, no, it's, it's good and I'm happy with how things have been going so far. This is Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball, brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie or follow the Twitter account at HRI Racing, hashtag every racing moment. So, how many days a week are you in the gallops there? Is it just for Dunica or are you riding out for the trainers as well, Gavin? No, I'm in with Dunica um, on the week. So, um, it's, it's, it's my base and. Um, He's the main stable I ride for, so I'm, I'm, I'm with him every morning. Do you find that a horse's form in the gallops, Gavin, transfers onto a race course? Is it as simple as that, that if you know a horse is working well with you in the gallops, that it might be able to produce it on the track? Yeah, no, it does, of course. Um, as it, that's another side of things as well. When, when you're riding them out at home, um, you probably get a, you've a better idea of... of horse as an individual and you know the little quirks and whatnot, but then there's obviously... Um, some horses like to keep a little bit for themselves when they get to the races. Others might work a little better at home and they, they mightn't show you the, the same spark at the races. So every horse um, has their own individual little ways of doing things. So when you sit on a horse like Piz Badil, who ran in the Derby last week at Epsom, uh, for the first time, do you, do you have a sense of, whoa, that, 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 that horse is special or that horse gives me a certain feel that I haven't experienced before? Yeah, no, he's he, he's always very straightforward at home and shows plenty in his work, but he always seems to have a little bit of extra spark when he goes to the races. And, um, look, I suppose that, that them real good horses, they they know when they have to perform and when they don't. And um, a horse like him, when, when he gets onto the race track, he, he always has a, a little extra to give. So a horse like that is a, a mile, mile and a half horse. Would he work now with the, the speed horses in the yard? Do they generally work over the same distance they'll race over? Um, most of ours, I suppose, would, would work over a mile and um, they'd have the kind of same, going to have them paired up um, with the same horses generally all year long. So um, they have the kind of their own work partners and um, you, you get a fair judge and, it keeps everything kind of in routine, and you can you can tell where, where you are with them. Is it a good setup, Adonikas? Yeah, look, he's he's very very. We we've a great bunch of staff, and he he doesn't miss much. He's he's very very sharp, um, and in fairness, every, everything seems to run pretty much like clockwork. So, um, no, it's it's a very very straightforward place to work. And uh, can you see the influence of Aiden on him? I suppose you could, yeah, um, like. Aiden has been on top for so, so long um, and Donica hasn't been anywhere else so obviously he's going to have little bit, bits of, of Aiden um, in the way he does things and I suppose that there's no better place to learn um, than in Ballydial, you know. Yeah. Pismadil disappointed in the derby. What was the reason for that, do you think? It's like everything, the horses have off days, I suppose. Um, we still rate them very, very highly and he probably hadn't got the best trip round. He had to race wide, and Frankie said he, he probably didn't handle the track all that well, and probably didn't have the nice, nicest trip round. So, um, look, there's there's plenty of little things you can look at. Um, so we'll just have to go again. It's like everything, they always have an off day. Was it disappointing for you? Obviously, uh, you know you didn't get the ride. Is that something you just have to accept as part of the game as a young jockey? You're only 22, Gavin. That. It's not going to lead to any tensions between yourself and Dunica that you just have to accept that sometimes it doesn't go your way? No, definitely not. Um, it's just one of these things, like you said, you just have to take it on the chin and, and move on. And um, I suppose, like everything, everyone wants to give their horse the best ch- chance in, in every race. And um, like Frankie's pretty much number one. So um, 
when when he's a chance to ride in your horse, especially for the owners, they're they're, they're gonna they're gonna want him on. So um, look, it's one of these things. You said I'm I'm still only very young, so um, you take it on the chin and you move on, and you just keep your head down and and stay working away. Are you gonna go to Royal Ascot and ride for Dunica there? That's the plan. Hopefully, um, we we have a horse. Um, in the Windsor Castle on Wednesday, he was impressive in his maiden and Navin. So um, hopefully he'll be able to take a step forward again. And um, he, he seems to show pl- plenty of speed and everything. So five furlongs in the Windsor Castle shouldn't be any problem to him. So we're looking forward to him. He's Wadao, is he? Wadao, yeah. And is it the case with him that he might be the fastest horse in the yard over that distance? I suppose you could say that. Yeah, um, he, he, he's. A lot of our horses would obviously be bred for, for going forward and um, pedigrees or everything. So um, different types of horses are, are bred for different things. But he, he's a fast pedigree and he's, he's, he's seen all his farm. Um, he, he's been running into nice types and he, he's always been able to hold his own. And um, He looked a very fast horse the last day in Navin. So ho- hopefully he can take another step forward. Is that the biggest thrill when you're on a five for a long sprinter? Is there any bigger thrill than that just for the speed of it? Yeah, look, it's 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 a great feeling. Um, cause they're obviously they're bred for nothing but speed, and you, you're going to clock a, a, a quicker a quicker speed. So that that's a great thrill. But then at the same time, when different longer distance races work out and, and they pick up well, I suppose you, you still get the same thrill, um, just in a different way. Emily Upjohn was unlucky there in the Oaks there at Epsom. Gavin, uh, she slipped out of the stalls. It's just so important, isn't it, to get a good start? And how do you uh, get a horse into a position where you can maybe help the horse start well in the race or out of the stalls, or is it more just a thing of luck? Most horses, um, with the exception of a few, are, are pretty straightforward. Once you ask them out the gate, they can, they can get out good and smart. And um, hopefully, if you're drawn well, um, you can get across into a nice position. Um, I suppose the, the draw is everything more so than, than most horses. It, it, it's fairly straightforward to get them get them out of the gate, good and smart. But I suppose the most important thing is, is being drawn well um, and straight away. That then that takes away a lot of problems because obviously if, if you're not drawn so well, you're going to have to work a little bit harder and, and, and use a little bit more petrol to get into an ideal position. Um, but then the other side of it is every, every horse wants to be ridden um, a, li- a little different so it all depends on, on what type of animal you're on We were speaking about Frankie there Gavin and uh, Lester Piggott obviously died there recently and um, we talk about role models and heroes would you have uh, modelled yourself in any jockey growing up would you have any, had any heroes growing up uh, watching racing and before he got involved Yeah look I suppose for me um, Mick Canam was always a, a very big idol of mine Um he, he he probably took Irish jockeys to the next level um, on a on an international basis. Um, look, he was he's world renowned, um, and he he he's won some of the biggest races in the world. So I suppose for me, um, Canaan probably would have been my biggest role model. And when you're in a way room with more senior jockeys around you, getting advice, what's the kind of the best advice you've been learning over the last year, 18 months, uh, since you lost your claim in terms of race riding and, and getting horses balanced and uh, timing your run? What are you picking up? What are you learning all the time from the people around you? Every day you, you, you go to the race, you learn something new, and um, especially like the older jockeys, and, and you're able to... I suppose it's like everything. The more, the more you're riding, and the more you're riding in the better races with with the more experienced jockeys, you see these little things, um, like positioning horses and and t- taking gaps when they come, um, and just I suppose being relaxed is probably one of the most important things. If you, if you're trying too hard to make something happen or, or or rushing it a bit, that's probably when you're going to start making mistakes. Um, so I suppose little things like that. But it's like everything. You just kind of you, you fall into fall into a position in a race, and um, if you can stay relaxed and they said take the gaps and they come and things like that, and you, you can often see the older jockeys that be a lot more relaxed through a race than maybe an inexperienced rider. So little things like that just to make everything run run smooth, and you're obviously going to have a much better chance um, if you can stay, stay petrol the whole way and keep everything smooth. You're going to have a much better chance of finishing out your race well. So I suppose little things like that. Um, 
the little things are probably what's going to help you in the long run rather than there's probably no real big changes when you're riding every day but it's, it's the little things I suppose that, that separates each rider Can a horse feel tension in a jockey? They can of course yeah um, they're, they're very clever animals and it's like everything if you're tensed up on their back they're going to feel that and it, 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 it's probably going to lead into them being a little bit on their nerve and as I said that 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 it, it, that's going to use more petrol if, if they're running on their nerve and, and running keen in your hands and over racing you're not going to have the same petrol um, to finish out your race so um, that that's very important to stay relaxed keep them relaxed and um, keep it as smooth as possible We're speaking to Gavin Ryan temporary jockey on uh, Friday Night Racing here brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland love every racing moment visit hri.ie Hashtag every racing moment. Another one you won on the other day in Cork, uh, Gavin, a bad bee during the week, uh, owned by uh, Anne-Marie O'Brien. And was this a, an impressive horse to ride? Yeah. Um, I said, bad bee is, is probably one of her names. She's, she's a bit of a, it's a bit of a hard name to get, get pronounced properly. Um, we don't really know what she's called either. We call her Babe and she's been called Bad Bee. So, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know, Gavin. <laughs> Yeah, we're not really sure what she's called, but um, one thing for sure is she, is she can gallop. She's improved at every run. Um, the time before last, she ran on, on slow ground in Cork, and, and that was a little bit of a worry, but she finished off her race real well um, and really got the hang of things inside the last furlong. So we, we were very sweet and are going, going back down to the same track um, this time. And look, she found it all very easy. She jumped and travelled, and it was, it was very simple. She put the race to bed very easy. She showed lovely will and attitude. So, um, look, I think she could improve again. And if she, if she does, I'm sure she's gonna she's gonna turn out to be a smart filly. Could be one for the Curra Derby weekend, I believe. She could, of course. Look, she's in. Um, she's she's entered up in Ascot towards the back end of next week, and she, she's in the Curra as well. So, um, there's there's a few options for her, but, um. That'll be the decision of Dunnock and, and obviously um, the owner. So um, wherever she goes, and I, I think if she takes a step forward, she, she's going to she's going to be in the shake up again, and she's a smart filly for, for the rest of the year. Anything else in Dunnock's yards that we should be keeping an eye out for? Obviously, Pisbury is going to go back to the colour. I think is is the plan, and um, that track should should suit for him. Um, there's plenty of horses there that, that, that are going to be kind of coming out in maidens now for, for the rest of the year. That There's a nice bunch there, so ho- hopefully a lot of them um, aren't named and stuff yet, but hopefully they'll, they'll work out to be nice horses. Have you been to Royal Ascot with crowds before, Gavin? There was a small crowd um, there last year. I'm not sure exactly what the, what the number was capped at, but there was a, there was, there was a small number of... Um, small number of spectators allowed in and it's obviously a place you'd love to ride a winner and given your road salt and stall to win the big handicap there at Galway a couple of years ago you know what a big meeting's like you know what the pressure's like and I suppose it's just treated like every other race and uh, and that can help you yeah look it's those big days are great you, you, you get a great buzz out of them but it's like everything it's, it's, it's where everyone wants to be and I suppose with that then the big days come with the pressure, but I think the pressure is good. Um, as I said, there's no point in, in wanting to get to them big days if, if, if you're not kind of, I suppose, happy and, and, and wanting the pressure and, and wanting, wanting the buzz. And, um, I think it just it, it just adds everything and makes it those big days a little more special. Is there ever much chatter in a race? Can you, do you ever like shout at each other or talk to each other or is it just over so quickly that it's it's pretty much silence between yourself and your fellow competitors, your fellow jockeys around you? There's only chatter, I suppose, and something's going wrong. There's, there's very little chatter if everything's going nice and smooth. Yeah, yeah, fascinating. Desert Crown, he was impressive in the derby, wasn't he? He was, of course. Um, obviously, Sir Michael Stout was very sweet and going into it. Um, he'd been impressive beforehand, but it's like everything you, you don't know when you're when you're running in in, the, in trials and whatnot. You never know what what they're after beating. But look, he 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 put the race to bed very very easy in Epsom, um, and he was able to back back up. Dor Michael's out thoughts on him um, look very very impressive. So he, he he's definitely a horse that I suppose you could say gone into everyone's notebooks. 
um, after the Derby. Does uh, English racing and Irish racing differ in terms of how races are run or how the styles are? Or do you, do you notice a difference when you go over the water in terms of race riding or tactics or those kind of things? You would, of course. Um, in England, you get a lot more race room than Ireland. Um, in Ireland, they, they ride very tight, and it's, if you get shuffled back, it could be very hard to get a run. Um, whereas in England, you seem to have a little bit more race and room. And um, I suppose England, they start racing a little bit further from home than Ireland. In Ireland, you, you always seem to kind of wait until you get inside the tree for a race to unfold. Whereas in England, they could be building from three and a half to four out. And um, that's definitely a difference. And then I suppose in, in, in sprint races in England, their sprinters would, would be a lot sharper out of the gates and, and into the stride. And they're probably quicker run races over those shorter trips. Um, than here in Ireland, so um, there's definitely look there's there's, there's definitely um, similarities as well, but there's also th- those few differences. Interesting, interesting, Gavin. Um, is there a certain race uh, of any race that you'd love to win? Is is there a meeting you'd love to win at? What are your ambitions, I suppose, going forward? There's, a, there's everyone wants to win um, top races, and I suppose everyone wants to win a Group One. But if if you were to narrow it down to one, I suppose. Um, one of the greatest races of them all would would be the Ark. Um, I was lucky enough to ride in Longchamp, and I, I was riding there last year at Ark weekend, and it's, there's there's a different sort of atmosphere um, in Paris, and it's 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 it's, it's a very very yeah. special weekend, and um, I suppose it's it's very much much in the, an international race. So I suppose if you were to narrow it down to one race, it would be it would have to be the Ark. And interesting, your uh, colleague in the weigh room, Ronald Whelan, had uh, the winner of the Prix de la Bay there with the case of you last year at the ARC meeting. And I'm sure you could see the joy in his face and the buzz. And obviously, you've ridden Fredo McGuinness's yard. Um, no reason why you can't be that person. Yeah, look, um, Ronnie was was over the moon and he, he's a very hard worker and um, he duly deserved a winner on a big stage like that. Um, but hopefully one day we, we, we'll be able to get a big big winner like that um, on a weekend with a bit of luck. Are you a tight bunch? Or are you to get on in the weigh room? Yeah, we do. Um, we do, of course. Everyone's ev- everyone looking at each other every day. So I suppose it, it it wouldn't be a great place if you didn't get along. But um, no, there's a, there's a great bunch of lads in Ireland, and um, we all we all seem to get along fine. Who's the funniest jockey in the weigh room? Oh, that I suppose that would be between Rory Cleary and Lee Roach. Very good. And uh, what about yourself? Are you a prankster, or are you kind of just do your own thing? You're quiet, or what's your vibe? <laughs> I suppose you'd have to ask other people. <laughs> Very good. Did you play a bit of hurling, Gavin? I did. Yeah, I played hurling all the way up along. Um, I suppose when when you're in tip, that's kind of the main sport. If you don't play hurling, I suppose you you nearly look that funny. So. Um, Everyone starts playing, playing, playing hurling under sixes and they work the whole way up then until most guys will, will, will go until they get to kind of the stage of, of past minors. But um, I obviously stopped a little bit sooner. I, I, I think the last year I played was under 16 and then obviously um, at 16 you, you start becoming an apprentice. So that was that was my main aim. But um, I played hurling the whole way from under sixes up until under 16. Was it killing all or is it another club? Killing all, yeah. Was it the Fannings? Are they are they killing all? Um, they are, yeah. Um, Nathan Fanning, he was he was goalie for Tip um, for a number of years, um, and he was also a sub goalie under Brendan Cummins. So yeah, they'd be killing all men as well. Very good. And Rachel Blackmore is killing all, is she? She is, yeah. Rachel Rachel is is a local girl as well. So um, and there's just Rachel one side of killing all and the Slatteries are the other side and um, there's, there's, there's plenty of us around. Her achievements have been magnificent, haven't they, this year and last year? Yeah, look, she, she's she's unbelievable. Um, she, she's really shown that there's... It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. Um, if, if, if you're good enough, which Rachel definitely is, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you, you get the results and... Um, her and Henry's Brom have, have been pretty much um, unstoppable in the last two years. So um, that's unbelievable for her. 
It's also inspiring, Gavin, in that it took her a long time. She made the decision to turn professional. Um, it took her a long time to even ride a winner. And then seven years later, she's riding the winner of the Grand National Gold Cup champion hurdle. So it hasn't happened overnight, which I suppose is in a is a positive and an, a, an encouraging thing for anybody in the weigh room. Yeah, but that, that, that without, without a credit to Rachel, um, a lot of people probably would have thrown in the towel if, if things weren't happening. Um, but she stuck at it and, and, and she stayed working away. And um, look, I think the results she's after getting, as they were in the last two years, are unbelievable. But it's like everything, you, ha- you have to remember those things that it, it, it took her a long time to get there. And um, I said, credit is completely to her for, for keeping at it, sticking at it and, and keeping her head down and um, she's been duly rewarded now but it, it wasn't an easy road for her to get there. Do you feel that the uh, hurling helped you at all in the race riding? Was there any kind of correlation do you think Gavin? Maybe uh, eye to hand coordination, that kind of thing? I wouldn't really say so much in um, in, in, in terms of, of like that hand eye coordination or anything like that but it, it, it definitely um, obviously gives you a will to win and uh, things like that. So I suppose in, in terms of mindset, um, all sports kind of link into one another and, and they all help you in some form. What about Tipperary at the moment? Is there any bit of transition? Yeah, um, I suppose that's a touchy subject at the minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're, we're struggling at the minute, but it's like everything. Um, all, all, all all counties and, and, and all clubs go, to go through them rough patches. So, um, We'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep struggling away and hopefully we'll be able to um, come out the right side of it. Well, Tipperary did host the Munster final last weekend. Did you watch it? I actually didn't get to watch much of it because I was racing and we had the stole on last weekend. So that was a, that was a late finish and a, a late time to be getting home. So unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it live, but I, I, I caught some of the highlights. The Tony Kelly uh, sideline was something else, wasn't it? It's like you. It's it like was. it's like you coming down the coming down the straight at the curra and nabbing somebody on the line or something like that. Yeah, without 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 without. But in fairness, it was it was, it was a tough match, and um, the the weather conditions weren't great. So I suppose emotions were running high and whatnot. Um, but look, it's like that. And those big days, everything's going to be a little bit, as you said earlier on, that the pressure is a little bit higher. And um, I'm sure it's the same. When you're standing on the sideline of a GA match. So what's the plan for the summer? Galway, I'm sure it'll be on the agenda, the Curra, and uh, it's just a case of just trying to ride as many winners as you can. That's it. Um, same, same pretty much as every week and during the season, you're just trying to ride as many winners as you can and, and, and like everything, getting the best horses. So um, that's pretty much the main aim. Gavin, the best look at Royal Ascot. I hope you win on that sprinter, uh, Waddell. Uh, if I can pronounce it correctly. Uh, thanks so much for joining us on Friday Night Racing. Up tip and uh, the best luck with Dunica for the rest of the season. Thanks a million. Thank you. All right, Gavin Ryan there speaking to us on Friday Night Racing. Follow his horses. Not interesting that Bad B, Bad B or Bad B, whatever the, whatever the name of it. Anyway, B-A-D-B. That's what definitely want to, to look out for uh, as a filly in the next few months. So Gavin Ryan and Dunica O'Brien. So the Tote are going to sponsor races down Patrick on both Saturday and Sunday's cards this weekend while on Tuesday this year's renewal of the Tote Connacht National will take place at Roscommon the full range of Tote bets will be available at the race courses and online on Tote.ie that Dan Patrick card starts tomorrow 1.45 the same time on Sunday the meeting at Limerick tomorrow begins at 2.05 also a fixture at Goran Park on Sunday we've got to leave it there Friday Night Racing and Off the Ball brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. We're going to speak to David Jennings from the Racing Post on tomorrow's show and Off the Ball here on News Talk to go through the Saturday cards, but also to preview Royal Ascot in more detail. So I hope you can tune in then. Friday Night Racing on Off the Ball. Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.